So you've been considering moving to a rural area, but you're not quite sure if it's the right lifestyle for you. There are a number of different nuances to rural living that you may not be aware of and could be detrimental to your decision on whether to move to a rural area. So stay tuned because I'm going to be diving into my top six things that you need to know before buying a rural property. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Ryan Meeks and I'm a local realtor here in Simcoe County and Cottage Country. If you live in the area or you think about moving to the area, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ding the bell so that you can be notified when I come out with new videos. You can also find all of my contact details in the description below, so please feel free to give me a text or an email and let's talk real estate. Now let's get into today's video. Number one is heating. Now when we talk about heating at a rural property, there are a number of considerations that you'll want to keep in mind. First up, you'll want to inspect the insulation and the efficiency of the home, checking that the walls are insulated, the attic, the basement, and checking that the doors and the windows are reasonably new and efficient. Next, you'll want to assess how the property is being heated. Majority of the time, you're going to find homes that are heated with a furnace, also known as forced air. So you'll want to see how old that furnace is when it was last replaced and how it is powered. There are a number of different ways that furnaces can be powered, including natural gas, propane, oil, and electric. Now, majority of rural areas are not gonna have natural gas lines, so you're more likely going to find propane, oil, or electric. When it comes to oil and propane furnaces, you're gonna have a propane or an oil tank somewhere on the property. These generally will have a rental cost associated to them as well as some sort of inspections and will need to be periodically refilled as you use them. These tanks can also be considered eyesores if they're not properly hidden on the property. If it's an older home, there may also be a buried oil tank, whether it's in use or not. This is something that you're going to want to look at as if it is an older oil tank, it may have rusted and leached into the soil, which could have a major environmental cleanup associated with it. Now, when we look at electric furnaces, yes, they don't have the tanks associated with them, but they can generally be less efficient and are going to run up your hydro bill. Other forms of heating, we have electric baseboard heat, which are not the most desirable as they will run up your hydro bill. You have wood burning heat like a wood stove, fireplace or pellet stove. And these generally need to have a wet inspection or wet certificate in order to get insurance and do require a little bit more manual labor to keep the heat going and are generally more difficult to get an accurate and even temperature across the home. If your main source of heat in the home is a wood burning appliance, you may also struggle to get financing on the home as it may be considered a three season property in the eyes of the bank or the mortgage lender. You've also got electric heat pumps, geothermal heating and cooling, as as well as radiant in-floor heating, which are all great options for an efficient home. Number two is electricity. Another huge consideration when shopping for a rural property and what, if any, self-sufficient electricity services are on the property in case of power outage or if you're looking to be off-grid. If the property has hydro service already, you'll want to assess if there is adequate service to meet your needs. If you want to build a workshop or have electricity running to a detached structure like a garage, a service upgrade may be required. Check that the electrical panel has been upgraded to breakers as there are still a lot of fuse panels found in older homes. In the case of a power outage, which in some rural areas can happen semi-frequently and may stay off for a long time, you'll want to check if the property has some backup power like a generator. If not, is there some sort of heat source as a backup like a wood stove or a fireplace in case of a power outage in the winter? You also want to see if there is a backup battery on the sump pump in case the power goes out during heavy rainfall or during the spring thaw. If you're interested in living off grid or saving power, or if hydro lines are too far away for it to be feasible to the home, are there solar panels on the property? If there are, you'll want to inquire with the sellers of the property to find out just how much power is serviced from the solar panels and how much, if any, savings have come from their hydro bill. If you're wanting to go completely off grid, how many more solar panels are you going to need? Number three is water. Now with rural properties, there are a number of different ways in which water can be delivered to the home. In some rural communities, there will be municipal water lines, but more often than not, a rural home is going to be reliant on its own well, a shared well, a community well, or water fed from a lake or a river. Now, when we talk about wells, there are a number of different types of wells that you can have, such as a dug well, a drilled well, a bored well, or a cistern, and many more. It is important when considering a rural property to make sure that the well was installed correctly and has the right amount of flow to service the number of bathrooms, kitchens, etc. that the home has. Having a certified well installer or inspector come and inspect the well to ensure that it is working properly 
as well as the pump equipment such as the pressure tank, heated water lines, filtration systems, etc., is advised as well as checking with the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks as to when the well was installed and by who. You'll also want to take a sample of the water from the home to the local health unit to have it tested for contaminants such as bacteria, chemicals and heavy metals. A property may also be serviced by a shared well, which another or several other properties may collectively use. It is important in this situation to review the shared well agreement so that you know whose property the well is located on, who is responsible for maintenance, and what costs that may be associated with you being on that agreement. Some rural communities will also have a community well, which is a larger well which services multiple properties in a neighborhood. If a property is fronting on or near a lake or river, the home may be serviced by pumping of the water from that lake or river to the home. Majority of properties which are serviced by this type of water are generally three season cottages in which the water will not be safe to drink unless it is filtered. You'll also want to check that the water being pumped from the lake or river has a heated water line so that you can use it year round. It is recommended if you are going to be using a home year round that a well be installed on the property. Number four is sewer. Just like water service, you'll also want to assess how the sewer is serviced to the home. Some rural areas may have access to municipal sewer lines, but more often than not, you're gonna be working with some sort of septic system. It is extremely important to look into how the wastewater is managed on the property, as it can be pretty costly to repair or replace a septic system. There are different types of septic systems, for example, a holding tank, which are buried tanks that range in different sizes and need to be periodically pumped out when they get full. These tanks are generally less desirable than a regular septic system, but a regular system doesn't have to be pumped out as frequently as it does leach into the earth. Some septic systems may be shared with neighboring properties or will be part of a community septic system, which you'll want to check what maintenance and fees may be associated with being a part of that septic system. Before firming up on a purchase of a rural property with a septic system, it's a good idea to have this inspected by a certified septic inspector as to avoid any potential costly repairs or replacements. Number five is location and property access. Rural properties have a ton of different ways in which properties can be accessed, as well as how the road is maintained and who is responsible for that maintenance. Municipally maintained year-round roads are the first and most similar to inner city roads, as they are maintained by the municipality, including snow plowing during the winter. There are also municipally owned and seasonally maintained roads in which the municipality still owns the road and takes care of it, but they do not plow it in the winter. And then you've also got private roads where the maintenance and the plowing of the road is the sole responsibility of whoever lives on that road. If you're considering purchasing a home on a private road, you'll want to review any agreements or any associations that may be in place when it comes to maintenance of the road and any costs associated with that. The final type of property access I wanted to talk about is a right of way. This is when the access to the property is through another person's property, or there may be someone who needs your property to access their property. You'll want to double check if there is a right of way registered on the property and what this may mean for you as the owner. Another important consideration when talking about the location of a property is how far away you are from certain amenities and services. You'll want to consider the drive time to and from work as well as different services such as hospitals, grocery stores, and emergency services. Are there food delivery services available like Uber Eats or Skip the Dishes? If you have kids, is there a school nearby and are you located near a school bus route? And finally, before you purchase a property, you'll wanna consider, is there internet available? How fast is it? As well as cell phone service. And finally, number six is the land and the neighboring properties. When taking a look at rural properties, You'll want to look into the land and the surrounding areas to look for any red flags. Firstly, you wanna check the zoning of the property and make sure that it meets your requirements. Some properties, especially larger acreage lots, may have multiple different zoning designations, such as rural and environmentally protected. Depending on what you wanna do with the property, this may limit what you can do. You can check the zoning of a property by going to the municipality's website and downloading their zoning map or using the interactive GIS map, which will also show you if there are any floodplains, environmentally protected land, or wetlands located near or on the property. You'll also want to assess what the neighboring properties are, and whether or not there may be any nuisance or undesirable factors which will affect your enjoyment of the property, such as quarries or farmlands where lots of noise or dust and debris may be around. Lastly, you'll want to consider if any of the neighboring properties are set to be developed in the near future, which could cause construction, lots of noise, and may negatively affect your property's value. So there you have it guys, my top six considerations before purchasing a rural property here in Ontario. If you are considering purchasing a rural property or moving to the area here in Simcoe County or Muskoka, 
please feel free to drop me an email, a call, or a text. You can find my details in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and please remember to hit that subscribe button.